yes, yes, yes. It is I, Kuan Yin. I am so pleased to be able to share with you this bedtime story. There once was a little girl and the little girl's name was Phoebe. From a very young age, Phoebe was able to see fairies. They were her friends. They were there to help her to acclimate to being in a physical body again. They were playmates for her. They comforted her. They appeared to her in beautiful dresses with wings and they had a golden aura around them. Phoebe knew that the fairies were real. She could talk to them, and they would talk back. She could play with them. They would sing to her. They would dance for her. And they told her bedtime stories. And as she grew up, Phoebe eventually was taken to kindergarten by her parents. And when she was taken to kindergarten, of course, her fairy friends came with her. In kindergarten, Phoebe started to make human friends. One of her friends was named Sheila. And when Sheila and Phoebe would play together, the fairies would get excited and want to join in.
But Sheila could not see or hear the fairies. Phoebe pointed and said, look, they're right there. Why can't you hear them? Why can't you see them? And Sheila was sad. I don't know, she said. I really do want to see your fairy friends. I don't know why I can't. Phoebe always thought that it was just the adults who were unable to see her fairies. Her mother and father never saw the fairies. Always told Phoebe that they were in her imagination that she had made them up, that she must have heard about fairies in a story and wanted so much for them to be real that she created them as her imaginary friends. Phoebe knew why adults couldn't see or hear the fairies. She knew that it was because they were much too serious, always focusing on work, politics, the economy, bills. They always seemed to be worried about something whether it was happening or whether it was something they feared might happen. But Sheila was a little girl like Phoebe. And so perhaps if Sheila couldn't see the fairies, Maybe they weren't real after all. Maybe they were just Phoebe's creation. She did have a very active imagination after all. So that night, as Phoebe was drifting off to sleep and her fairies were not only telling her a bedtime story but acting it out for her. She asked one of the fairies, the purple one, who went by the name of Violet. She said, Violet, why can't my friend Sheila see you and hear you? And Violet said to Phoebe, It is because we are meant for you and only you. We don't want to be seen by everyone. We only want to be your fairies. Your friend, Sheila, has her own. And Phoebe said, why doesn't Sheila see her own fairies then? And Violet said to Phoebe, you're going to teach her how to see them. 
that will be your gift to her. And Phoebe said, but I don't know how to teach someone to see and hear fairies. It comes so naturally to me. I didn't have to try to see you guys. You just showed up. And Violet said, that's what makes you such a natural teacher. The truth is that just by being in your presence, she is going to get everything that she needs to be able to see her own fairy beings. And Phoebe said, all right, I will do my best. And with that, she drifted off to sleep. The next day in kindergarten, during playtime, Phoebe and Sheila were having a little tea party. And Sheila asked Phoebe about the fairies. She said, are they here right now? What are they doing? What are they saying? I want to see them so much. And Phoebe said to Sheila, they told me last night that you have your own fairies and that you are going to see and hear them someday yourself. They told me that I'm going to help you. You're going to help me, said Sheila. That's so exciting. How, when can you help me? And Phoebe said, I'm doing it right now, silly. I'm helping you by believing, by knowing that my fairies are real, and by believing in you, I'm helping you to see yours and hear yours. And someday, I will help everyone, even the adults. And Sheila said, I don't know if the adults will ever be able to see fairies again. They're always so angry and anxious about everything. And Phoebe said, well, it's something that I want to do, and it's something that I believe I can do. And if I set my mind to it, I'm sure I can help the adults. But first, I'm helping you. Sheila then said, All right. What are we going to do? How am I going to see and hear my own fairies? I'm so excited. I cannot wait. And Phoebe, in all of her youth, was very wise. 
And so she said, You will need patience. You will need to believe. And most of all, you will need to never feel jealous of me and my relationship with my fairies. Instead, you will want to remind yourself that I'm a girl just like you. And if I can see and hear my fairies, then certainly you can see and hear yours. That night, Sheila went home and told her parents about her fairies and how excited she was to see them and hear them. Sheila's parents looked at each other and without saying anything to one another, they both knew that this was going to be a disappointment for their daughter. They knew just by looking at each other that they had to keep her expectations low to not get her hopes up for something that they knew was not possible. And so they said to their lovely daughter, you can see and hear fairies in your imagination. But they aren't really real. And Sheila hung her head because she expected this from her parents, but it was still hard for her to hear. And so she said, all right, mommy, all right, daddy. I will just play with my fairies in my imagination, but I will never expect them to be real. And Sheila finished her dinner and was tucked into bed by her mommy. Her mommy told her a bedtime story. And Sheila listened and paid attention to the way her mommy felt as she told the story. And after the story was done, Sheila said to her mommy, Do you believe that what you just read was real. And Sheila's mommy said, it's just a story. It's not meant to be real. And Sheila said to her mommy, in all of her youthful wisdom, When you tell me the story, it's real to me. I see the characters. I know their personalities. 
I know what they like and what they don't like. And I feel things inside me. So to me, the story is very real. And Sheila's mother smiled and kissed her goodnight. And as Sheila drifted off to sleep, she thought to herself that she also wants to help the adults someday to see their fairies. The next day, Phoebe and Sheila returned to kindergarten class and they struck up a conversation, as they always do, about the important things in life, what their dreams were, what their favorite things were. and how much they loved their parents, their stuffed animals, how much they loved bedtime stories and dessert. And Sheila told Phoebe about her conversation with her parents and her conversation with her mommy and Phoebe sighed and said yes the adults they're going to be the hardest ones to get to see their fairies again but I know that I can do it and I will do it. I feel it. And Sheila nodded in agreement. I feel it too, she said. And during their recess, Phoebe and Sheila laid down on the grass together and looked up at the clouds and Phoebe could see her fairies dancing and singing. And the fairy Violet said to Phoebe, I know that you're having your doubts about whether we're really real or whether we just exist in your imagination. So I'm going to do something to prove to you that we're real. And Phoebe said, oh no, I don't need you to do that. But Violet insisted. And she said to Phoebe, you see that cloud up in the sky, the big one, it has no real shape to it. And Phoebe said, yes, I see that cloud. And Violet said, I'm going to make that cloud into the shape of a heart. And Phoebe said, okay, if you want to, but I don't need you to. And then Violet flew up into the sky, higher and higher. And Phoebe said to Sheila, one of my fairies is going to make that cloud into a heart. She just told me she would. 
And Sheila squeezed Phoebe's hand and said, Oh boy, I can't wait to see this. Violet got higher and higher into the atmosphere. She reached that cloud and she turned it into a heart just as she said she would. And Phoebe and Sheila laughed and squealed. And Sheila even cried a little. She said, this is so amazing. Your fairies are so good. I love them so much. I love you. And I love your fairies. And Sheila didn't just say it, she meant it. And she closed her eyes. And she started talking to her fairies. She said, I know you're there. And I know you want to play with me. I know that we can have lots of fun together. And I'm open to seeing and hearing you now. And she opened her eyes. And she saw little specks of light at first. Little golden dots. They seemed to be floating. They seemed to be flying around. And she squeezed Phoebe's hand. And her heart exploded. And she said, I see them. I see my fairies. Well, not fully, but I'm starting to see them. And better yet, I feel them. I feel their presence around me. They're so lovely. They're so beautiful. And they're all mine. And Phoebe said, yes, they're all yours. They're here just for you. That's how important you are. That's how important we all are, that we all have our own fairies. And Sheila could feel that. She could feel that she was important enough to have her own fairies. And then the little golden dots began to form into little winged beings. Each representing a different color. And her green fairy whispered in her ear. My name is Trixie, she said. And I'm going to be your best friend. Sheila was now beside herself with delight. She was crying and crying. She was so happy. And then the kindergarten teacher saw what was happening. She saw little Sheila crying and she came over to her and she said, Oh no, 
What's wrong? Why are you crying? And Sheila said, because I can see and hear my fairies now. And the teacher thought, this is going to be a distraction. She's not going to be able to learn what I want to teach her. This won't do at all. I'm going to have to call her parents and tell them about my concerns. And so that night when Sheila was at home, the kindergarten teacher called Sheila's mommy and daddy. And she told them about the fairy incident and how she was concerned that Sheila wouldn't learn what she needed to learn because of it. And the mommy and daddy listened and reassured the teacher that their daughter would be all right, that they would talk to her. And then they hung up the phone And they looked at each other and they knew what they had to say. So that night, as Sheila's mommy and daddy were tucking her in, they said to her, we understand now that you can see and hear your fairies. That's right. It's so exciting. I'm so happy, said Sheila. And they said, we are happy for you too. We want you to always hear from your fairies and see them. We want you to play with them. We want you to know that no matter what your teacher says, your fairies are real. And they're for you. And Sheila said, I know they're for me. They're here just for me. And she giggled and giggled and giggled as her fairies were dancing around showing their happiness at this moment. Sheila's mommy and daddy tucked her in, kissed her goodnight. And Sheila spent most of that night talking to and playing with her fairies. She slept a little, but not too much. And the next day at school, Phoebe and Sheila were playing again. And Sheila was telling Phoebe about her parents and what they had said. And this warmed Phoebe's heart and she knew now that there was hope. There was hope for all the adults because Sheila's parents believed that her fairies were real. And so Phoebe asked her fairy, Violet, about helping the 
the teacher to be able to see her own fairies and hear them and play with them. And Violet said, Now there are two of you, and the two of you together are more powerful than just one of you in influencing the adults. And Phoebe said, I know you're right. I just don't know how we're going to do it. And Violet said, don't worry about how. Just know that it's going to happen. Continue to believe. Believe that the adults can do it. And so, that day at recess, some of the other children were playing with a red rubber ball. And the area where they were playing was close to a parking lot. As they were playing with the ball and Phoebe and Sheila were just watching, the ball got away from one of the little boys and the teacher said, don't worry, I'll get it. The ball bounced into the parking lot. And around the corner, where the teacher couldn't see, there was a car, and it was moving fast. She couldn't see it because it was around the corner still. And it was one of those cars that was very silent because it was electric. So she couldn't hear it either and she was about to go into the parking lot and get the ball. And Phoebe's fairies knew what was going to happen And Violet said to Phoebe, scream, scream as loud as you can. And Phoebe listened to her fairy and she let out the loudest scream she could make. And the teacher stopped dead in her tracks, turned around to see what was happening. And as she did, the electric car swooshed by, crushing the red rubber ball. The teacher rushed over to Phoebe and said, what happened? Why did you scream? You stopped me from getting hit by that car. How did you know? And Phoebe said, my fairy. She just told me to scream. She didn't say why. But I listened. And the teacher then felt in her heart so much love so much appreciation. She felt herself becoming a child again, a child who could believe. And 
And she saw out of the corner of her eyes little golden dots floating around, flying around. She was beginning to see her fairies. Then she smiled because she knew what was happening. She remembered. She remembered being a child and she remembered her fairies. And that is the end of the story. I am Kuan Yin and I hold you in my heart.